another couple videos done and then get right back into the swing of things on Tuesday the 24th. So, with that uh, little TLDR or TLDW at the beginning out of the way, let's let's play some Dwarf Fort, shall we? And um, the reason there was no records today is because I need to figure out Windows settings. All right, so you can say hi, YouTube, if you want. Or um, mean things to Tim Sweeney, because us saying the other word Tim, or me saying the other word Tim Sweeney, um, I let's just say got that VOD demonetized, but worth it. But at the same time, Tim Sweeney is still now my mortal enemy because you screwed with Bandcamp and laid off of ha half of Bandcamp. So, um... Damn you, Tim Sweeney. But that's all. Tim Sweeney's my mortal enemy. How, how dare you buy Bandcamp, lay off half of Bandcamp, and... <laughs> Tim Sweeney, you deserve a Windows update. That's... That's what I have to say to you, sir. <laughs> Um, I'm going to turn the saving back on because I had it off for recording last night. Um, all right. Honestly, that, that should go under rare insults. Honestly, you know, that, just, that you, you deserve a Windows update. You deserve to be updated my, by Microsoft, Tim Sweeney. All right. Anyway, um, now, now, now that we're through, through that very important greeting, let's, let's go through who's alive in the fort. Shall we? So this is a brand new. Actually, let's do it. Let's do a tour first. This is a brand new ish fort, um, which the dwarves are currently channeling out. This, um, as for the fort itself, it's a volcano fort in this kind of open plan design down here. I'm just gonna take a little bit of uh, construction to actually make like mostly functional. Uh, this is the fort where I built, where I set up that video that I put up this morning. I'd rather play Desert Bus, frankly, than have to deal with Windows updates sometimes. Uh, besides, there's like a skill to Desert Bus, and you can raise money for charity with Desert Bus, so Desert Bus is a good thing. Um, this over here is going to be uh, our entrance defense area. This is where um, our Marks Dwarves are going to live, and uh, this is where they're going to train, and it's going to be a good time. Um, one of my plans is to uh, current is to train up my Marks Dwarves as much as I can, who are currently in the, pro in the process of training. Um, they're going to get trained up as much as they can, and they are going to... Uh, train on these like lovely um mark dwarf spots where they shoot both directions um and we have all these little bolts now i did some experimenting last night with mark dwarves because people were concerned about individual bolts it appears that they will equip 25 bolts all right um and if they are split to single bolts they'll still pick up 25 bolts they just pick them up one at a time so they'll either pick them up in sets of five, bone bolts are generally in sets of five, or they'll pick them up in individual bolts um, if they've been split, or they'll pick up a pack of 25 bolts, um, at which point then they'll start firing them, and I need cages. So let's make some cages. So that's, seemed, that's one thing that I've figured out about um, crossbows at this point, is that they will pick up 25, which is, you know... Actually, Chad, I have a question. Since um, Mark's Dwarves are more worky now, have any of you guys uh, successfully defended forts with them? Out of curiosity. Uh, dwarves currently alive in the fortress um, are Shake Break, uh, Arch Blaze Stuff, uh, Base Case False, Bastet, Board Guy, Celestaris, Darius Cardron, and uh, Dying Sun, as well as Elfie Bean, uh, G, G Gunstein, and uh Gazech OCB, as well as uh, Glass Half Empty, Gobsneck, and Gesterium, Kit Wanter, and Lyagushka, as well as Mako, and Matt Korax, and Nyaleth, and Firehawk, QN Green Tea, and Ranger Rick, Red Octo Bear, and Rhino, Sentient Potato, and Celebot, and Shady Stilonitis, and Suited Giraffe, Telon Artho, Terminal Wetness, UGDPY, and Wiz the God. Not yet. No, you have a fort, but it's uh, you, you don't have a fort really ready for defenses yet. Gotcha. Um, 
you know, honestly, I, I feel like Desert Bus needs more credit. As I know that it's kind of a meme, but Desert Bus is a force for charity. So when, when, when you suggest Desert Bus in my mind, I, I think of video game that raises a lot of money for, for charity. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, just, just, gi just give me a second, Ezer. Um... Hello, blind and chat. Old guy in black, thank you very much for the ninth month. Appreciate you, dude. All right, uh, Neezer, you said you, you would liketh a dwarfeth? How about... No, not that one. You're, that's stricken by melancholy. How about... That's selfie bean. How about... Nope, that's firehawk. How about... Uh... That's a dwarf. Smelt magnetite orb. Neezer. He can be very happy and optimistic. Nothing like streamer. Uh, and uh, generally can respond to emotional appeals. He doesn't often feel yeah, envious of others and he tends to hang on to grievances. He has a tendency to go it alone without considering the advice of others and tenses up when he's nervous and skips around when he's excited and needs alcohol to get through the working day. And Nameless, thank you very much for the prime for three months. Desert bus stream when? You know, fun fact, I haven't streamed Desert Bus, but I have streamed the um, the Pico 8 D-Make. <laughs> um, it's called Mini Desert Bus. Anyway, uh, I don't know. When, when, when I l finally actually fully lose my mind? Uh, are we trading? Gee, I guess not. Um, well. He, did, he personally dislikes cooperation, sees war as a useful means of an, to an end, and does not care about family one way or another, and dreams of crafting a masterwork someday, like Stibonite and Christa, Christa Cola, uh and green glass as and sheeps. Well, war hammers and barrels and earrings and ballista arrows and emus for their inquisitive nature. And the words of the poem of Lessons. Uh, and the spinner has been possessed. As a OCB. That's what you're going to go make. Desert Jalopy? Isn't Jalopy a game? Unrelated to Desert Bus? Are we mixing games now? <laughs> cool day. Is that what's happening? Because, like, we could do that once I beat Dwarf Fortress. I'm pretty sure I've won Dwarf Fortress already. Although I've never built Armox Altar or whatever with blood on it and put it in hell. I've never successfully done that, so. Oh. Dodok, being the rightful heir, has inherited the position of Baron. Of over-maligned. Huh. All right. Well. Uh, you're making an artifact right now, is what you're doing. Good evening. Um... over maligned I wonder if I'm wondering if over maligned is like a captured pit yeah there it is the dark dwarven pits so my faction just took over some pits interesting well, you're a weaver. So I, I'm not sure. That's interesting. News and rumors? Well, it looks like we didn't recently take it over. It's something we took over a while ago. Huh.
On level 10, you have a nine block with three hot stone and six gems. Is there something bad waiting in there? I can't guarantee it. Sometimes is the only actual way to answer that. Sometimes there will be something bad in there. Sometimes there won't be. Yeah, it could just be lava. It could be lava and a demon. It could be, you know, m multiple things. So you're, you've begun your artifact and you've claimed steel bars, paracut, white jades, and gypsum blocks, mudstone, and avocado wood. And, uh, you're a dabbling furnace operator. Spinner. Hmm. Huh. All right, well, it is time to please the nobles. I guess I need to figure out where the nobles go. Because I hadn't thought about that at all. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Like, I hadn't even started contemplating where I would put nobles in this fort. Um, hmm. I kind of like the idea of, like, up here. I like nobles. Nobles are fine. I've got no issues with getting nobles right now, actually. But, um... Here's an idea. I make a little stairway going up this way. Or maybe a little further back, like right here. And then I make an open walkway and then put the bedrooms like up here. Why is your game so fast? Uh, you run at 50 FPS and it's much slower. Well, you just answered the question. My game's running at 100 FPS. So why does my game run so fast? Well, it's running at a higher frame rate than you. This seems like a space where we could run nobles. There is supposedly gold on this map. I just haven't found any of it yet. Now, if the question is, why am I running at a high frame rate? It's the frame rate that I'm used to. Um, the game used to always run at a really high frame rate at the start, so that's just what I'm used to setting it to. Open walkway with windows and railings? Well, right now, the, the railing would be a wall. can also go down here, and we can fill this stuff in. We can get some more of these bedrooms set up. So, like I said, this was the fort where I built that uh, fat burning contraption. However, uh, that's on a different timeline. So, you guys... So, it doesn't actually exist here. I'm not entirely certain I'm going to actually build it in this fort. I just wanted to make a video about it to make a video about it. Because it had been sitting in my brain for like a week. And I just wanted to do it uh, and get it done. Because I was like, I think that'll work. And it did. And I'm quite happy that it did. Um... Uh, and I'm, I'm quite flattered that people are uh, referring to me as borderline psychotic because I'll have you know I'm just norm I'm generally just psychotic, not borderline. There, there's no borderline there, so um, they, they, just to get that out of the way, so there's no confusion, of course. But in my actual forts, I'm quite kind to my dwarves, generally. <laughs> oh well, that's interesting. We got a shoe. Uh, Gaza o OCB, uh, the spinner has created. Age Salkoskan, Emast Thilseg, uh, a steel high boot, and offers it to the ageless creation. Well, that's so kind of you. I will absolutely use that to make our noble happy. So that we can literally give the noble the boot. There's a joke in there somewhere. I'll, I'll figure it out eventually. Um, this is a steel high boot. Our craft store ship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with avocado wood and encircled with bands of cushioned mudstone cabochons and menaces with spikes of steel. On the item is an image of a radiant cut gem in white jade. On the item is an image of a Cody man in gypsum. Can we fill it with beer? God, I wish. I think I could probably contaminate it with beer with severe duress, but... I 
right, so this will be a noble, a noble bedroom of, of very noble design. We'll put more noble bedrooms up here as needed. Maybe on this layer I'll put in uh, offices or like one layer beneath we'll put in offices. We'll do it that way. So chat room, how was your weekend? You guys do anything fun? Play any fun video games? See any exciting sights? Go to any fun shows? Did you eat a particularly good meal? Did you play a video game called Dwarf Fortress? Because <laughs> if you have, like, I certainly didn't. Bioshock and about to start Bioshock 2. Damn! Bioshock and Bioshock 2. Oh no, Edzul was found dead. Anyway, uh, Edzul um, was a very sad dwarf who failed an artifact because I didn't notice. Um, so it's my fault entirely. But uh, since the dwarf is no longer with us, is what it is. Goodbye, Dwarf. So I think that the most important uh, object that we give to this noble is the very, very, very important statue that I think every single one of our nobles should receive upon arriving in this fortress. It is a sign of peace and happiness and a sign that um, they will do great things here even though this isn't the fortress where they're you know, uh, Barony actually resides. So I, I think I should just get this out of the way first because this is the most important statue that any noble could ever receive. And that is, a sta of course, a statue of Avuz, the chinchilla god, um, at his adorable Nisi. Um, the holy chinchilla himself. May he spread fluffy cuteness amongst all dwarven kind. All hail Avos. Does the Baron worship the Chinchilla God? That's not a concern of us or the Baron. It is simply a welcoming gift of peace that you will receive upon arriving in this fortress. I actually haven't checked. <laughs> Should probably check. Do do they wor do they in fact worship the right God? I don't think they do. Although to be fair, from my research, um, it's very much a minority. Of dwarves actually worship this god? Doesn't worship any god. All right, well, you're open to suggestion. That's good. You do, however, have a younger sister. So they're uh, a former member of the nomadic group, the Spry Channel. Well, that's interesting. And you're now a, a baron, of course. It doesn't feel anything due to inebriation. What a boring soul. Wow. Doesn't even he doesn't even have a bedroom yet. <laughs> Poor dwarf. All right, so this is just going to be this. And this right here is going to be assigned to our baron. I don't even have a mayor yet. Wait, no, I do have a mayor. I did, I okay, I just got a mayor. I guess we'll put the mayor's bedroom right next to the baron's bedroom. Might as well do both of these at the same time. Because doing two at once makes things easy. Because apparently I do have a mayor. And our mayor is the suited giraffe. Well, would you look at that? Mayor suited giraffe. There you are. Um, I need to figure out where your bedroom is. So I can give it to somebody else. Here. Um, some random peasant can have your bedroom. Mayor. It's okay. You'll thank me later. Yeah, a baron of a place that... Well, it's not that far. It's only several days travel. But it is, however, the baron of a, of a pit, you know? Um, let's do steel cabinet and steel coffer. No, it's steel chest. And we'll do four of each. Um, we're going to do rock weapon racks, rock armor stands, 
And let's do 20 of each. We'll let them work on that. So this fortress has quite a bit of steel. Um, if we actually look at the like number of steel bars we have, currently it's a pretty high number. Um, and that number is rising quite for, quite quickly um, because we have 177 iron bars. We're making coke at a pretty rapid rate uh, from bitumous coal everywhere. And that's turning into pig iron, which is then turning into steel. And uh, it turns out we have kind of a lot of steel. And that number is going to keep going up. So the plan for this fort is to defend it with uh, steel bolts. Um, and hopefully we can do that uh, as efficiently and effectively as possible. You did a $17 million run in Cheese Runner. Not bad, not bad. That's, that's, a, that's a solid big cheese run. Congratulations, my cheese. I'm sure you... Uh, many great things and riches and wealth running for the cheese syndicates await you in, 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 the, in the near and or far future. I wonder if... If we make some art of the pit, we can find the conquer date. Oh, true. Because it was um, over maligned, right? Well, this is the Baron, right? I, I think it's pretty safe to assume that the Baron is not going to, um, you know... What's the word I'm looking for here? I, I think it's pretty safe to assume that the Baron is not going to move out anytime soon. So let's say over maligned and over maligned. So he'll get uh, placemats in front of his front door um, depicting over maligned. And we'll get to see if um, we can discover how it was conquered. Um, and then the mayor gets to go here. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Let's see what art we get. Once these two dwarves are done drawing. It's striking many the artwork relates to the goblin entombed stalker Zahn. Uh, rising from the dead as an entombed stalker and over maligned in 228. So in 228, a zombie was risen. It's an image of humans and dwarves by you shot. They are massac... The humans are massacring the dwarves. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, it, re it, re it, it relates to the defeat of the Cloister of Universes of the Uncommon Mansion in the late summer of 228 during the destruction of Overmaligned. Over maligned. Doormat. More like Doom Mat. Like Rimworld? I generally when people ask that question, I just kind of eye roll because I assume that they're just like trying to annoy people, but this is the game that inspired the existence of Rimworld, so not the other way around. And really they're not very much alike at all. Um Door Fortress is much more of a of a macro game, whereas RimWorld is much of a micro game. I don't particularly enjoy playing RimWorld. I know it's a very popular video game, but um, it's not really a game I like. So very much like apples and oranges, yeah. They're uh, theoretically both fruit, but very, very different process. Only dabbled in RimWorld? Right, well... Think about it this way, since we're talking about similar games. It's like comparing Terraria and Minecraft, or Civilization and StarCraft. It's like, sure, Terraria and Minecraft are both like kind of open-worldish building games uh, with some survival elements and progression. And sure, StarCraft and uh, Civilization are both strategy games, but like the way the games play is so completely different, it's like goofy to compare the two. 
Um, Rimworld, large, most of Rimworld's similarities to Dwarf Fortress were from the early days of Rimworld's development. The vast majority of that stuff has since been removed from the game. Um, and all of the storytelling elements that that game has, um, in order to really get the good ones, you kind of have to buy pretty ex some pretty expensive DLC packs. So, uh, honestly, for, for me, Dwarf Fortress is a much easier to support and play game because it uh, doesn't have any of that. And the depth is completely different, and the difficulty is completely different, and the uh, progression and the gameplay loop is completely different, and yeah. Coal in a volcano. Coal being around the volcano. Coal at the base of the volcano. We do have a lot of coal, though. It's it's actually quite nice. It's been a while since I've had an embark with just, like, tons of coal everywhere. It's kind of sad, though, because um, if I had this fort, like, in a couple of months, we could have made coal our number one trade good. And uh, we could have, like, you know, pretended to be, like, Santa's, um, what's the word, um... Production facility for coal for naughty children? That could have been fun, but oh well. No, they aren't. They're but they're both strategy games, right? Civ is a 4X, which is why I'm saying like Comparing RimWorld and Dwarf Fortress is silly because of how different they are. I'm giving you extreme examples of other games that are very different to kind of make it clear as to why I don't think those two games should be compared. Basically, the only reason people compare RimWorld and Dwarf Fortress is because RimWorld marketed itself as being like Dwarf Fortress, which is really not true, especially in the current era of RimWorld. Where does Santa get the coal in the first place? China, probably. <laughs> probably just buys it, like, bulk, you know? <laughs> just goes and buys a couple warehouses around, you know, around mid-late November, I would guess. Gets a large shipment sent to the North Pole. Loads it up into bags, individual gift baggies and all that, you know, then just does the distributing. I mean, it's, it's all a manage matter of supply and demand. The worse the world is being at the time, the more coal he needs. It's great business, I would assume. That or, you know, it just, um, we should look at who the Coca-Cola company is investing in. Because if they've invested in any coal anywhere at any point, it's probably Santa. Because everybody knows that the Coca-Cola company invented the existence of Santa. At least the current iteration of Santa. St. Nicholas has, in, has existed in previous uh, mythologies in the past. However, the current Santa Claus was originally a Coca-Cola marketing scheme. To associate their soft drink with the holiday. So this is going to be Mayor's space right here, and this is going to be Baron's. Um, they're both happy with their bedrooms, which is good. Although they, they do still need, you know, these. Some chests and uh, some cabinets. Then the office is going to get two more cabinets down here. Um, the office is also going to get uh, this display item once it's ready. Did I not queue up a... No, I did not queue up some rock pedestals. Rock pedestal. Let's do 10 of those. Coal production is a bad thing, so you simply heavily uh, correlated with the demand. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, people who really need coal are generally bad people, so they're actually quite happy when they receive their naughty list gifts. Or you, they just happen to live somewhere in the world where, you know, you need coal for heat. And then that just sucks. You know, it, it's funny. when Growing up, because, like, my, my family's pretty European, right? Growing up, um, we used to have two days of gifts uh, around the holiday of Christmas, right? We would have St. Nick's Day, which was around halfway through December. And then we would have Christmas. 
And uh, so on average, compared to like other kids our age, we got way less gifts. But that is because, uh, like from Santa Claus, air quotes. But that's because like the majority of them were actually on St. Nick's Day. So we basically didn't do like what a lot of Canadian families do for like stocking stuffers and such. We didn't do any of that because that was all done the week before. Um, which was a pretty fun way of doing it, actually. We quite liked it. Had coal investments in Australia? That's where Santa gets his coal from. Okay, so, uh, chat, I, I, I'm ready right now for the, like, three-hour-long uh, video essay on where Santa Claus theoretically gets his coal from. Folding ideas... I've got a holiday pitch for you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, I want to know where Santa Claus gets his coal from. Isn't St. Nick the OG Santa? Pre-marketing, technically. Like, you could absolutely frame it in, like, you know, the planet's heating up, blah, 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 blah. We, so we should be worried about all forms of coal being, like, passed around the world. So this means Santa is a criminal. I'm, I'm ready for that. I will uh, absolutely watch a video about Santa's illegal uh, coal shipments. Yeah, I've heard about this. I mean, I know that that's come up before, uh, Shandara, Siva. It's fun news to read, you know? All right. Um, how are we doing up here? What does the mayor need? Oh, right, yeah, mayor, mayor also needs weapon racks for some reason. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm getting notices of something. Hold on. Let me just add these in for the mayor. Are those snatchers protect the children's really for real? Oh wow, dwarven snatchers, hell static, ago hell static. Look at that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like the coal coal prices have spiked, and the coal industry is still running because of Santa, obviously. No, I, I, so, someone needs to make that video. I feel like that would be a lovely piece of satire. And you know, you, you, like, also just from a, from a writing perspective, like, and a storytelling perspective, you could turn it into like a, a video like on climate change by the end of it. Cancel Santa. Damn right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've heard like people say just that before. Um, so Dying Sun is being very enthusiastic here. We were able to capture one of the thieves, but Dying Sun is being extraordinarily enthusiastic here and chasing this dwarf with a steel crossbow and no weapon. Um, so he's doing his damnedest to run directly after, uh, this dwarf, however, is currently, like, dripping in sweat. So that's a suboptimal situation, uh, to be, like, honest with you. Um, also, something that I haven't mentioned at all throughout today, because I'll be completely honest with you, I forgot. Um, we have rhinos. So, that's about it. He was a pagan father Christmas and required human sacrifice. <laughs> uh, I'm going to see, I, I want to test something. So, this area was exposed to sun, and now is lit so grass is growing if i dig one layer underneath this will this area be considered above ground or no i want to know so i'm gonna try it let's find out because i don't actually know but if it does that could actually be quite useful Back from the days when he was pagan Father Christmas and he required human sacrifices. So he's just got like... Maybe that's why the North Poles are heating up. North and South Poles are heating up. Maybe that's why the ice caps are melting is because Santa's just started burning all of his coal. Because kids have been too good recently. So the result is kids need to bring back pranks. 
if the kids would behave worse, then Santa wouldn't need to burn off his coal supply. I think it will too, but I'd like to find out. I'm just going to dig this out. Besides, I'm going to put animals down here that... Um... Actually, here's an easy way to figure this out. Let's just put a single farm tile right here and see what type of plants it allows. I'm getting a phone call from FedEx. Two seconds. It's an automated call, but I do need to hear where it is. I'm ready. I'm ready. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> I love it when they're just like, this is an automated phone call. It's like, why couldn't I just speak with the person? Uh, dwarves have arrived to trade. Well, that's lovely. So yeah, it is considered underground. So that's that experiment. Well, that's not too hard to fix. I can just kind of channel through this. And then that should consider it above ground. For like a strip up here, because that's all I really need. Because now I'm cu curious if this is considered above ground. And then I probably need to actually trade. Let's see. Is this considered above ground now? Also, I feel like Dwarf Fortress is kind of quiet. Let me fix this. Uh, I was in a phone call, so I never got to answer your question. Uh, this is a new world and new fort. And uh, also, for future reference, uh, if you want to know like what's going on with the last fort, exclamation point, last fort. And if you want to know what's going on with this fort, exclamation point, goal. Um, I'm really Aizen from the Mountain Homes, says Laika. I think that's a new name. Interesting. Well, anyway, um, I don't really need steel. What do you have for animals? I haven't actually looked yet. Nothing particularly interesting. For automated calls, press 1 to press 9 to cancel is better than say, I agree. No, it, it literally just says, say, I'm ready. Or wait till the end for the beep. So it's like, then she just starts talking at you in French. And then you're just like, I'm ready. I'm ready. <clears throat> Gotta love uh, automated phone call setups, right? Which is like partially why I, I, I had muted. Because, you know, at, at a point, they just kind of become a little bit hysterical I, I suppose um you know I think I'm just going to import stone actually um valuable stones so let's let, let's let's import three different types of glass because we have no sand and let's go to stone and say maybe platinum yeah let's work let's ask for platinum nuggets bring us platinum please they want to uh, meat leather and water skins already now, I still don't really have anything to trade. Um, I don't really have much in the way of damaged clothing. I, I guess I have some, some, some stuff. Um, I, I guess I could bring these nest boxes. <laughs> I, I don't actually need those. Um, we got some bags, I suppose. Apparently I caught a chimpanzee. 
And a black mamba? And an armadillo? Huh. Yeah, fort is not a command. I'm not sure why everybody's trying it, but you know. Um, huh. I kind of want to train the black mamba. Let's train the black mamba. Let's also train that armadillo. And let's train the, wow, we got a bunch of chimps. Train the monkeys. Planet of the dwarfs. As for all these wild boars and warthogs, those can just get eaten. The funny thing is there's gonna we're gonna end up with like plump helmet seeds in every single one of my cages. Which is gonna be kind of amazing. Oh yeah. Well what's the problem with that though? Permanent just means they can only happen once. That's fine. And also, it's just a black mamba. It's not like it's a giant black mamba. I don't see a problem with this. Also, did I not make a weaver? It did. Well, I guess they're not weaving fast enough. Weave faster! I'm sure it'll make it a lovely addition to the children's petting zoo. There's too much unnecessary so-called innovation in tech and services and products and you feel crap, like crap product, uh, which I feel like crap product high quality. Crap product high quality. Um, not sure what you mean exactly. Also, chat room. So, sort of news, I, uh, tonight, have a package to go pick up, which is what that phone call was about. So I have to end the stream at uh, 5.50 today, or 5.45, I guess, so I can go pick up that package um, because it's something that I actually need for TwitchCon. Um, it's likely it's something I need for TwitchCon, question mark. Um, so either I can take a long break at 5.50 or I can end at 5, or at 5.45, 5.30. So I'm not sure. Um, we'll, we'll see it. We'll play it by ear when I get there. Um, by the time we get there, I may just be like, all right, guys, we're done. I'm going to just go, you know, collect my package and move on with my day. Uh, but I might not be in that kind of mood. We'll, we'll see. Um, so tonight's either going to end with um, not a sudden end. That's the wrong word to use. Today's stream's either going to end uh, around then or have a long break at some point. Depends on how we're feeling and how things are going around that time of day. So just thought I'd keep you guys up to date with where my brain's at in that regard. How's that sound to you, chat room? It sounds horrible. That's that's fine. We'll work through it. One at a time. <laughs> we'll just trade. I actually feel like min-maxing my trading. It's a lot of chalk. All right, let's uh, go back to pleasing my nobles. These are going to be dining rooms. We can do multi-dining rooms. Thunk. Uh, you over here, you can be this person. You right here, you can be uh, this person. We're making progress. Uh, you want us to make maces. All right. Actually, let's just make steel maces. Three of them. All right. Now that we've done that, You can go into here, and we're going to give them the boot. Elfie Beans is against it? Got it. Well, no breaks. Elfie Beans has spoken. Um, speaking of things Elfie Bean definitely didn't say, chat room, we have uh, some migrants. Would you like a dwarf? If you do not currently have a dwarf in the current fortress, they pick me. Baka, 
uh, feels helping others is an imposition on his time and lives a slow going and leisurely pace. Is very impolite and inconsiderate of property and has a strong sense of duty. He is somewhat scatterbrained and he tends to be passive in discussions. He tends to consider what, other, what others think of him and is quick to anger. I don't think that one's true. Uh, he likes to try to get things done per uh, perfectly, or he doesn't try to get things done perfectly, and he enjoys the company of others who can handle stress and isn't particularly ambitious and needs alcohol to get through the working day. I'm so sorry for laughing. Uh, personally respects power and doesn't see art, doesn't care about art one way or another, doesn't care if others take the time to master skills, and dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. Um, Baka Glass doesn't worship the Chinchilla God. Uh, next up here is a peasant. Um, this peasant is uh, Salty Tempest. Uh, Salty Tempest is a peasant and is sometimes cruel and always tense and jittery. Generally is quite confident in his abilities when undertaking specific ventures. He likes to keep his things practical without delving too deeply into the abstract and he like and he tends to form only tenuous emotional bonds with others and he has a great aesthetic doesn't have a great aesthetic sensitivity is conflicted by this as he values artwork and his creation he takes effort helping gifts without feeling particularly grateful and he often feels discouraged he doesn't often feel lustful and he likes a little excitement now and again and he has a sense of humor uh, he tends to consider what others think of him and he finds obligations confining though he is conflicted by this since he believes in the importance of the rule of law dreams he repeatedly snaps his fingers when he's trying to remember something and needs alcohol to get through the working day and dreams of mastering a skill and personally doesn't particularly value loyalty. So you dream of mastering a skill. I'm sorry in advance. I'm adding you to the military. But fortunately, you're Mark's dwarves, so you're significantly less likely to die than normal. Uh, next one here is a Cel... Oh, oh not Celestine. Amethyst, a.k.a. Uh, Celestine. This one, uh, she's married to Salty Tempest and has two children who are going to show up in a minute, probably. Um, she relies on the advice of others during decision-making and is very easily falls into love and develops positive feelings, is prone to strong feelings of lust, and is gen and is grateful when others help her out. She tries to return favors and has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions of her practical applications, and she tends to make a small mess with her own possessions. She is quite polite, and she generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. She is slow to anger and she tends to hang on to grievances. She tends to form only tenuous emotional bonds with others and exhales sharply when she becomes exasperated and when she's thinking she has a tendency to chew on her cheek. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. And dreams of raising a family and personally uh, prefers a noisy and bustling life to boring days without activity and values tradition and does not care about friendship and doesn't particularly care about craftsmanship. Sounds like more children on the way? Possibly. Anyway, uh, the rest of you get to be Celestine's kids. Um, so, Gfin, GGFN, uh, is extremely confident in herself in situations requiring her skills, is really is rarely jealous, and rarely tries to assert herself in the conversation. She is moved by art and natural beauty, though she is conflicted by this for more than one reason. She tries to keep her things orderly, and she likes to and she likes to keep things practical without delving too deeply into the abstract. She isn't particularly curious about the world and enjoys the company of others, and isn't, is often cheerful and takes offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful, and tenses up when she's nervous, and she bites her nails when she's nervous. She needs alcohol to get through the working day, and dreams of raising a family, and personally strongly values tranquility and quiet, and finds artwork boring. She's 11. And she doesn't worship any gods. Lanix would like you to post Peter's chat room. Next up, we have, uh... Frac... The... Bellum. Fractabellum. Uh, she is 8 years old. And, uh does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity, and she is uh, conflicted by this since she values artwork and its creation. She is often, she is somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger, and she's quite polite. Uh, she has little interest in joking around, and she can handle stress. She prefers that everyone live as harmoniously as possible, and she doesn't seek out excitement. It's all called to get through the working day. Uh, next here, we have Link Man. I spelled that right. So two ends. M. Yes, it is. Uh, Link Man says, I am at my best under pressure, and his adequate armorsmith will need you. He's often sad and dejected, and he has a calm demeanor. He tries to consider what he tries to consider what others think of him, but he enjoys the company of others, and he doesn't often feel envious of others and can handle stress. He blows out his breath when he's annoyed, and he needs alcohol to get through the working day. He personally deeply respects skill at arms and values family and sees introspection as important and finds eloquence and artful speech off putting, and dreams of creating a great work of art. Uh, and he also doesn't worship the chinchilla and has no family. Well, this fortress will probably last long enough for you to do something co cool unless something horrible happens in the next 10 minutes. 
Don't worry, Elfie. Don't worry. Uh, next up is Attacking Sharks, who actually died previously. So this is Attacking Sharks 2. Because I, and I remember that because I mentioned that Attacking Sharks have died. I said that the other day and chat was like, we were getting attacked by sharks. And I was like, no, we're not getting attacked by sharks, but attacking sharks died. Anyways, context. Uh, he is prone to feelings of jealousy, mostly about the fact that the other dwarf like was here previously. So it's now the second one. Uh, he's a strong, he has a strong sense of duty and he's, he has a greedy streak and he occasionally overindulges. He has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions over practical applications and does not have great aesthetic sensitivity. He's conflicted by this. He values artwork and his creation. He lives a fast paced life and is not particularly interested in what others think of him. And he needs alcohol to get through the work day, dreams of crafting a mass work someday. And Brisley finds the following of tradition foolish and limiting and doesn't respect a society that has settled into harmony without debate and strife and values peace over war. And I think that that is everything. And uh, I think that's it for naming for right now. So we'll let some other dwarves just run in. We'll name some other dwarves later. Did you have two lovers? Excuse me. Lady, come here. You have two children and two lovers. Hmm. Well, it looks like her, her kid's the first one to come in right after. Um, seems like neither of the lovers are here. Well, Armok, save us. 85. So by the way, the population is set to 300. I haven't capped it. Um, so the population is pretty high. Like, pretty goddamn high. Um, do I have hatch covers? Yes, I do. So, the next thing that I want to do is this right here. We're going to go to my, my squatties, and I'm going to set them to do nothing special. I'll turn off their orders. And I'm going to queue up steel bolts. Let's just make 100 sets of steel bolts. They're all going to go right here. Also, um, let's get all these boulders out of here. So let's go here, grab these, go down to here, and uh, make this into a trash zone. I'm sure you'll definitely survive, Crackton. What could possibly go wrong? Where creatures, zombies, nightmares, various monsters from the deep. I'm sure nothing will possibly go wrong. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, make some of these bolts. They're going to get transported up here, and I'm going to forbid them. They're going to remain forbidden until the next fight, basically. So they are only going to be loadable by my squads during fights. Is how we're going to do this. Let's also set up a few bedrooms, and then we need to do offices for my mayor and my baron. They have dining halls. They do not have offices. And uh, we do not have enough bedrooms right now. So we need to focus on bedrooms for a little bit. Because the population for uh, this install is set to 300. And I don't intend on turning that down. So I need to maintain um, lodgings for a lot of dwarves. And uh, chat room, Bucket Glass would like you to post beers. Oof. You know, some days I impress myself that I managed to turn my stream on to stream. Today is one of those days. I am genuinely impressed by myself. If you ever just, like, impress yourself, you're like, man, I didn't think I'd be able to do this today. Even when your job is, you know, playing video games on the internet, but, like, you know. Playing video games on the internet and being relatively, like, composed about it. Legends of Amberland. No idea what that is. What 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 it? Sounds like some sap. We'll try to have a safe trip. That's mostly up to Flair Airlines, though. They are the airline that has crashed more planes in Canada this year than any other airline. So, um, that that part's exciting. The best part about it is uh, the fact that the airline that we're flying, uh, while they they have crashed three planes this year in Canada, nobody died in any of them. So, meh. <laughs> it's mostly up to them, I will say. But uh, yeah, I, I also hope we have a safe trip. <laughs> Although, fortunately, we're not flying in Canada. We're flying out of Canada, so. I say we, me and Orange are taking the same flight down. 
Which actually wasn't the original intended plan. It just kind of worked out that way. For your family to have a two-bedroom suite to share? Mm. Currently, I don't have enough suites for all of my dwarves. So why, why do you guys get priority? I mean, like, these are all of the dwarves. All of the dwarves that do not have anything beneath their name don't even have a bedroom right now. And you're concerned that you have to share uh, a, a suite with all of your children and you all sleep once every three weeks? I'm just saying. I, I think that's maybe a little bit of a silly request in a world where dwarves don't all sleep at the same time and uh, they don't sleep every night. In fact, they don't sleep most days. They don't sleep most weeks. I mean, yes, you do have a rather large family, but like, you know, I've seen dwarves with families of 14 pretty comfortably share a single bed bedroom. I tried, sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, like, th this fortress overseers are pretty brutal landlord, I'm just saying. It's like, you're, you're lucky that you're getting three by two tiles worth of bedroom space and not like two by two or one by one like some. I mean, I, I don't know. I usually end up giving all the kids bedrooms separately, so that'll probably happen eventually. But, um... Because kids don't claim bedrooms until they turn 18 in Dwarf Fort. But you can assign, like, babies their own bedrooms if you want. Although, they'll still sleep with mom until they're old enough. Although, fun fact, if you assign a baby a bedroom before they're an adult, um, they get kind of upset that they're not sleeping in their own bedroom, which I think is kind of funny. It's like suddenly a new need just pops up in their head and then when they go crash with mom because mom carries them to bed, uh, they get mildly upset. Which is something I noticed once, which I genuinely think is really funny. It's like, I like the baby just knows. The baby's like, I know that there's a bedroom aside to me, but I have to share a bed with this peasant. It's just like, oh, you, you just gotta love entitled dormant children. It's like, it's, just, it's one of my favorite little, like just, Pro tip, Door Fortress, don't assign a, a bedroom to a baby as an infant because they will get, not a, it's not gonna destroy their life or anything, but they will be slightly upset. I think it's like annoyed is the term that it gets. I don't have object permanence yet and I don't know what a person is, but. Damn it, I, I, I have this housing, I've earned this housing. This is my dwarven right living here. I deserve my own bed. It's simple existence logic. Which is a term I made up two seconds ago. Um, all right, so scrolling up to here, we've got we got you and you. Um, they both just need offices. So we're gonna put the offices down here. And I'm gonna do the offices slightly differently. Offices are going to get either balconies or windows. And also this is something I should mention. If you happen to be in Vegas, or are in the greater Las Vegas area, or are attending TwitchCon and you would like to hang out over the next couple of days, uh, simply reach out to me via Discord and we'll set something up. Because I will be in Las Vegas from Wednesday until Monday, which is a whole day and a bit longer than I was initially intending. So uh, it's kind of turned into an impromptu vacation more than a work convention, but frankly, kind of need the vacation, especially after this last week. Last week's been long. It's been, a, it's been a rough couple days, guys. Like, I'm hanging in there, but boy. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been a long time. Let's just bring in those 
pieces I totally wasn't intending to, but it'll work. It's the right size and shape and color. All right, now I need to go check in on those bolts. See how them bolts are coming along. Oh, I think I know what's up. You're probably assigned to collect ammo, aren't you? Yes, you are. Look at that. Let's get them steel bolts up here. I say, what are you hauling? But literally nothing. You're going to archery practice. Ah, and you have steel bolts. Got it. Well, I don't really want you going to archery practice. Is what I would like you to do. So let's just set you to off duty currently. Not that that's stopping you clearly. <laughs> From an incompetent noob to a slightly less incompetent noob. Well, we're stuck in an ad right now. We do much. Um, no problem. I mean, I'm still an incompetent noob in many ways. You know, like. Um, I, there, there was somebody earlier in chat asking me, um, But yeah, I mean, even in, in uh, myself, I am still an incompetent uh, noob in many ways. I still learn things pretty frequently about this game. Like, almost every stream, something will come up, and it'll usually be something small and minute, like, I didn't know I couldn't make this out of this material. Well, I guess I now know that. <laughs> um, so, you know. You, you 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 learn things now and again. And I think it's part of the fun and allure of Dwarf Fortress to a degree is that you're always learning things. You headed out for the day? Got a tank? We'll see you when we see you, dude. We will see you when we see you. Freeways, thanks for the prime for the 34th month. Appreciate you, dude. It means a lot. All right, so now that we're done with that. Peter, thank you very much for the fifth month. Appreciate you greatly. I'm seeing a lot of hauling jobs, I think. Also, I still have this meeting zone here. It was interesting. I've never just, like, left a meeting zone around. Now I kind of want to go, like, maybe make a meeting zone waiting room next to the offices. So those are done. This is going to be office number one down here. And then office number two can go right here. Maybe, like, make a meeting zone waiting room and set it up, like, just put booze in it and stuff, maybe? Could work. All right, so we're going to first assign suited giraffe. Darius, thank you very much for the five-pack of gift subs. Means a lot, man. And just a reminder to everybody, those tier one subscriptions paid the same amount for me as uh, bits because I get 70% now from them. So thank you very much. Means a lot. Like, seriously. I thought about um, making a, like, subscriber point goal for a new emote, but when I actually looked at it and looked how many subscriber points it would take, it just kind of felt bad making a, like, 
goal that was so lofty, so I just kind of didn't. Maybe kind of sucks, but I don't know. Right, so that's our mayor's office, who is now totally satisfied. Uh, we now just need to get our baron satisfied, which is going to be a little bit harder, but still not possible. Going to take a little bit more doing, but we'll get it done. Chad, do you have any particularly memorable no nobles? Maybe like a noble that was annoying or entertaining for some reason? I uh, had a mayor who just demanded I make socks like 15 times a year, so we put pedestals in his in his bedroom and just covered them in socks. So basically the dude slept next to a pile of like 500 old pairs of socks. It's a good time. <laughs> Mechanically, yeah. It's very, 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 very similar. I mean, every major version polo of Dwarf Fortress has some changes. Um, like trees behave a little bit differently in this version. Constructions behave a little bit differently in this version, but that's not uncommon between Dwarf Fortress versions in the past. So Dwarf Fortress, like, it's like, when I sat down and had to learn this version before it was out fully, cause I got it like four days early or something. Um, it was literally just me sitting there like trying to figure out UI. Cause like the game all behaved the same regardless of what I did, but um, I had to learn the new UI. So I, from the new UI, the game is largely the same. The chat is is clearly having a party in the tavern for the hype train. And uh, Techno Sarah, thank you very much for the tier one subscription. Appreciate you. Where is the tech? Pay attention to that later. Party time, chat. Most memorable king for you came immediately and asked attraction benches. You set him on a go you sent him on a goblin destruction mission, then he didn't come back. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm, I'm assuming he he arrived live and well, and they probably welcomed him in with open arms. Um, in your current fortress, you have a count who consistently forbids the trade of traction benches. Uh, it's up there, thumb thrower, yeah. I can't wait until it gets bigger. That is a lot of seeds. I need more bags. Um, Alexander from Kit Fox wants to speak with you. Uh, so you can DM her. Or, um, she'll DM you. But thanks for the 14th month. Appreciate you, man. Are you in trouble? No. I mean, yes. I mean, duh. When are we not? That's also my first response generally is, oh God, what did I do? Someone would like to speak with you. Ah, shit, I fucked up. That can't, that can never mean anything good. You have like 510 gauntlets because your Baron just asks for them. I mean, like, I can't export maces right now, and this Baron is now starting to, like, demand maces. So my assumption is that we're going to be, like, because I was kind of thinking about building some weapon traps. Um, So I guess we're making mace-powered weapon traps. I suppose. Um, But, uh, Sam, thank you very much for leveling up that hype train. It, it does mean a lot.
And for those of you who don't know, uh, Sam was one of the first people to send in a fortress for the community forts. And um, that, or one of the first fortresses, actually I think one of the most viewed community forts ever, is now, uh, is this, which is on the Steam page, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool. Yeah, also, did, did you know that Steel Walls is the most viewed community fort? It's got almost 40,000 views, mate. Which is kind of nuts. But yeah, I I still forever will be amused by Goats the Mayor of Sox. We were, there was much rejoicing when Goats the Mayor of Sox died and I could like throw all of the so socks into the lava sea. Cuz it was long death so that that dwarf was mayor for like 70 years. <laughs> It was like a really long time. It just kind of kept going. Amethyst has claimed a workshop and wants cut gems. Well, that checks out. And I need gems to cut. I will cut raw glass into gems then, because currently we have no gems, apparently. Let's see. Is that all that you wanted? Somehow got a queen on your first uh, fort despite never appointing a baron. Uh, if a rel if their relative dies, they can uh, they can inherit the position. You want stacked cloth? Okay. What else do you need? A quarry? Okay. What else do you need? Rough gems? Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Well, if you need rough gems and cut gems, yeah, I need to go mine some gems. Um. All right. Time to go eyeball some gems. Where are gems? Chat. I need gems. Chat. Yell if you see gems. I need gems. Um. They are truly outrageous, but we do in fact need gems. Um, that's Anderite, not Gemses. You require Gemses. Where are the Gemses? Gems? Gems! Jammy, 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 gem, gems. I find the lack of gems disturbing. All right, well, we'll dig down here. One of my pillars? One of my pillars has gems? Northeast. Well, that's alabaster. I don't see this pillar, but I believe you. Hmm. Yep, I also don't, I definitely don't see this pillar. Regardless, we'll, we'll find it. It's just, I gotta dig down. Maybe you saw something wrong? Yeah, that's true. Definitely a plausible possibilities. Let's go down by one here. Bring us down here. Let's hope we find some gems in here. Because I need uncut gems. Of course, I could always just dig straight down. But uh, chat room, thank you very much for the hype train. With the nine subscriptions. Very, very kind of you, as always. Right? No gems? I mean, worst case scenario, we can just start digging down. Also, I forgot to mention, chat, there's a giant lake here. Uh, this lake is um, generally filled with some interesting things. Also, we have some fun animals in the vicinity. Not like crazy big animals, but just like real life crazy big animals, including like giraffes, which apparently I caught one. I've just learned. So um, I guess we should clearly train these giraffes and then move them to like a grazing pasture, shouldn't we? I mean, who doesn't want pet giraffes? I can tell you right now, I do. I do definitely want 
train draft. Just like I want these black mambas. And chimpanzees. I apparently have a stray black mamba. Giraffes are deadly. Have any of you guys seen that video of the giraffe that's like trying to eat the lady's like food and she like closes her like card window on the giraffe's head and the giraffe just breaks his head out the side of the car and rips the door off? You guys seen that video? <laughs> Cause that shout out okay, so shout outs to Lolar, the uh eleven year old child for leading the black mamba. <laughs> <laughs> to where it needs to be. Um, fortunately, the Black Mamba does feel hope when being released from confinement and felt patient while being confined. Um, I'm sure the Black Mamba will get along very well with the chimpanzees and our rhinos. Maybe they can be trained into pets. Yeah, just 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 because. Um, well, like any animal can be as made available as pets, but dwarves will only claim the pets if the pets are um, an animal that they are interested in. Um, so yeah, they they can absolutely be claimed as pets and made available as pets. It's like a null chance that the mayor will be the one that claims them. It's a very 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 small chance. Um, fortunately, however, we do in fact have a breeding pair of giraffe, which are behind my camera right now, but we do have a breeding pair of giraffe, uh, so we can make more giraffe. We can make the giraffe multiply. They can use their heads as a mace? Ah. Well, that I'm sure is fine. I don't know how to respond to that. It's like, they can use their heads as a base. It's like, yeah, I believe it. What the fuck is going on? They're terrified while it's in conflict. Ah, a chimpanzee decided to stop being trained. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's beat the ever-living shit out of it. Turns out the black mom is trying to bite him. <laughs> Get him, boy! Get him! Oh, he's bit him many times but hasn't actually injected any venom. Um, the black mum is going on a run. The animals are all running around like crazy. My military is running up to go beat the crap out of the monkey. Uh, the monkey has been beaten pretty effectively, I would say, uh, and is now bleeding profusely. <laughs> um... The monkey is now dead. So this is fine. Um, however... That could have gone a lot better. Uh, I think I think we need to focus on getting the... Uh, the Black Mamba tied up again, right? Right? It's okay. The Black Mamba is still just semi-wild. As long as they have trainers assigned to them. I think the Black Mamba should have a specific trainer assigned. Such as, um, Elfie Bean. Elfie Bean, you get to handle the Black Mamba. And also the giraffes. Because that seems fitting. You better not screw that up. Because <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you do, you, you may turn into a dead, 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 dead bean. Um, good luck, Elfie. Um, anyway, what, what else was I doing? Right, uh, I need to make more pasture space. But I also need to build this. But I also need to build bedrooms. But I also need to... Excuse me, everything else. Uh, this needs to be assigned to you, Baron of Overmaligned. Who, now the only thing that the Baron of Over Overmaligned needs is a tomb, and I still need gems. And I built this too far down. Meaning you can get knocked out on there. What am I doing with mine cards? I'm assuming you meant blind and not bling. Um, what am I doing with the minecarts? Transporting boulders. Mostly. Mostly. 
Hi, Nuzzle. No, it's all good. It's not, not too uncommon of an autocorrect error. Yeah, I mean, it's only a matter of time before people start referring to me as Bing. So, I haven't unpaused the game yet. The enemy have come and are laying siege to the fortress. This is a, um, undead character wielding copper gear. Uh, which isn't fun, but not the worst. And they appear to have immediately left. There is an armadillo here, so that we, we know that our spy armadillo cameras are in full working order. However, um, that is slight terrifying. I'm assuming a bunch of necromancers are going to appear in a moment, and uh, that'll be the end of it, but it's hard to say, really. Have we found gems yet? Just noped out. Sometimes enemies will do that. But it is kind of hard to pinpoint exactly why they've done that. But yes, sometimes enemies do that. So I'm actually going to go up one here. This is going to loop back around to here. But, like I was saying earlier, we are in fact searching for gems, believe it or not. So, uh, we need to find that dwarf some gems. Otherwise, that dwarf's going to show up dead, which I would rather not have happen. So, let's go find that dwarf some gems. So, I need to find a good place to dig downwards. Um, so, I think our location to dig downwards is going to be right here. I, didn't, I don't really want to go down to the caverns. I'd rather not find the caverns if I can avoid it. But, we need to dig down. We need to dig down for Amethyst, the dwarf. So the things we do for our own. Get to it, Eurist. Begin the digs. But yeah, no, so there, there are several different towers that we're at war with. And towers have a habit of scouting many times before they actually attack you. Which means they show up and then immediately leave. Um, and they tend to do that a bunch before they actually start attacking. Trying to find my other ammo stockpile. So I've got all these piles down here. Got these guys standing up here. They're mostly equipped with boron, bo bo bore bolts and steel bolts. They obviously need live targets to train on, but they're not getting that right now, clearly. And I need to figure out where all of the ammo is ending up. because I need all of the iron bolts, or steel bolts, rather, to end up up here. But they're not ending up up here right now. How many have they made? Quite a lot. Quite a lot of steel bolts. Bins or not, there needs to be steel bolts up here. Well, there's currently plenty down here. Hmm. But yeah, it's not too uncommon for zombies to just kind of leave immediately. It's not too uncommon. So I'm not too surprised to see them doing that. 
Oh, there we go. Well, that actually wasn't what I wanted to have Great happen, luck. but. MLK, thank you very much for the sixth month. Welcome back. Chat, can I get a round of beers? Appreciate the, the resub greatly. Means a lot. What have I done? Oh, that's what I've done wrong. Forgot to assign the quality levels. Let's forget about that. Um, well, that's a lot of magnetite, so that's good, but that's not what I need. I need gems. Gems. Gems, 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 gems. Although the magnetite is useful. So I will tell them to auto mine the magnetite on a lower priority. Oh, there's white jades. Auto mine that shit. Please. Oh, never mind. She's begun a mysterious construction. Well, I guess that answers that. Yeah, she got her white jades. Excellent. It's okay. So am I. Um, so our... Finish the artifact, Celeste. Uh, Amethyst. Uh, the peasant has created uh, a Rensis... Ungolbolzist, a gypsum ring, and offers it to the ageless creation. This is a gypsum ring. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is encrust encircled with bands of single-cut white jades, and this object menaces with spikes of pigtail. On the item is an image of a decahedral decahedra in gypsum. On the item is an image of Celebot, the dwarf, in gypsum. Celebot is laughing. The artwork relates to the fey mood of the dwarf Celebot in Firebolt in the mid-spring of 353. On the item is an image of full phases, uh... The influence of tarnishing a steel high boot in green glass. That boot that we made obviously earlier. Yes, the boot that we made earlier. So, um, good for you. Yes, it's of course it's a decahedral decahedra. Do not ask about the lack of logic of that statement. <laughs> Do not even concern yourself with such um, illogical fallacies of this video game which it's definitely full of. Um, all right, so. Celeste, how do, how do you feel about your ring being dedicated to our Baron? And uh, I'm thinking that this also gets given to the mayor. So this is all full of steel bolts. So I'm just going to forbid all of these. Because these are mostly metal and steel bolts, which is what we need. So I'm just going to forbid all of those. And then I'm going to set my military to train. And we have a job um, set so that they um, will just make bone bolts whenever there's bones available. And they will train on those. Yes, they train significantly faster um, when just, you know shooting live targets, but can't always have live targets, turns out. Can't always have large targets. Well, that sucks. I didn't want to fight that! Although I will say this is a cool-looking cavern. Look at this, like, shelf here. You found it amusing that she made a gem craft when peasant? I, I also find it very amusing. Well, she made a ring, but... For reference, um, Celeste always likes her dwarves to be ladies and uh, gem crafters. And uh, so obviously, you know, didn't get the gem crafter, but did make a craft using gems. Um, so we've discovered a downward passage as well. All right, let's take a look at things. I really like this cavern layer. This is a cool cavern layer. Look at this. Holy iron. Holy friggin' iron. That's a lot of iron. That's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of iron. Where are we? We're up here. Ah. I think I can erase this. That's so much iron. Holy shit. 
Well, we're about to get hit by an ad. Um, wait for the ad to play. What do you think, chat? Make this area up here safe, and there's a downwards passage right there, so seal that off. And um, build up this. I think we could do that. I think we could do that pretty well, actually. I think this will be all of the... Considering the absurd amounts of coal we have earlier up, or far, further up, um, what I could build, because we're going to get attacked by cavern critters, right? Because this is only like two levels high here, we could uh, build battlements around the edge of this, and I could set my squads to patrol around the edges of this and shoot anything that moves. There's also vomit down here. Dead pigtails. More gems. Lots of stuff we can do down here. And of course, we could set that into a well. Which we don't currently have. No, it's, I don't mind the moss, actually. I mean, even the moss is useful. I mostly just didn't want to have to deal with caverns. It's, it's not actually, like, a bad thing that we found the caverns. Finding the caverns is fine. I just kind of didn't want to do it yet. That's that's the main thing. Because I just kind of didn't want to do it yet. But Make everything I or out of iron and steel and rule the world. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, look at look at these veins that we just dug through. Like this one right here. 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 Like, it's actually kind of insane how many of these we've run into. Um, just on just a few levels. So frankly, chat, uh, if you have access to my emotes, I think now's a good time to post a whole bunch of the um, old dwarf of the pickaxe going plunk. Uh, because I would say that we're winning. That's what I would say. I would say that we are winning. So just for clarity's sake, for bitchmas coal and chalk, I'm going to go up to this stockpile here and remove chalk, which I already did. Good to know. Because we've mined very deep. It's time, time to keep mining. And uh, I think it's time to make... Steel Anvil. Five of them. And it's time to expand this lovely, 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 absolutely wonderful little forge design. To be uh, bigger. And... Um, better -er. Very technical terminology being used here today. Bigger and better -er. And the way I'm going to make this bigger and better -er is um, by, well, I guess, filling this whole thing up with lava. Because who doesn't want a little tiny res res reservoir down here? I mean, it'll work. It'll be fine. And also, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, and make me some more steel picks. Because I don't actually have enough picks right now. I think I have three right now. So I'm no longer worried about running out of steel. I was a little bit worried about running out of steel. I'm not going to lie. But I'm no longer worried about running out of steel. So that's a, you know, a, a, a benefit of this whole situation is I'm no longer concerned about the prospect of potentially running out of steel. At least not anytime soon. I think one way to put this is this fortress is um, pretty set. I would say this fortress is pretty set. This is going to go across here, and then I'm going to channel down up top here. That's what's going to happen. So right there, we're going to channel across here. And then I'm just going to fill this in. And this side over here is going to fill. 
they're going to dig that out. And this up here is going to fill pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I was going to say, wh technically whips are the best. I'm not entirely sure where picks being the best weapons came from. Picks are like weaker whips, basically, in weapon format. Picks are also interesting because they're not weapons by default. So the concept of using them as weapons, I think, is pretty alluring to people. Um, but no, um, if we want to like just get like down to stats, whips are the best weapons in the game. But also, like chat stated above, best is also pretty subjective even when it comes to like the best statistically because it depends on what um, type of weapon you're trying to make. Best weapon we can craft? I would argue that adamantine short swords are better. Same with adamantine spears. I would also argue a platinum warhammer is better. But if we're talking like specifically steel weapons, I would still rather have spears. I would still rather have spears. All right, I'm going to get rid of this down here because you have made at least one steel anvil. And I'm going to begin building my magma forges. Steel anvil. Bars. Steel anvil. These things. Steel anvil. Those things. And it begins. Um, if you, not entirely sure why those jobs all canceled. Uh, if, if you do want to make platinum warhammers, you can just mod your game pretty easily to make those craftable as weapons. Um, it's just a simple raw edit. I know how to do it on older versions of the game. I don't know about current versions, but there's probably somebody who's made a workshop mod. A lot of that stuff is actually, like I said, very simple to put together. Okay, I have no idea why this... Oh, I, I know why it got cancelled. I guarantee you, actually, it was because this got deconstructed and those items got displaced. Let's bring you back. So now they just have to bring the anvils over. And we can make stuff significantly quicker. But yeah, I mean, best all, often in Dwarf Fortress is also what is the per current person playing the video game's favorite weapon? So chat, what's your favorite weapon to use? Which one do you prioritize? I like to use spears. And if I'm using foreign weapons, then flails and whips. But I don't always use flails or whips. You once got a Slade Warhammer? How did you get a Slade Warhammer? <laughs> Was it just an item you found? Or did your dwarves manage to craft a Slade Warhammer? In which case, how did you manage to get the crafting materials to make a Warhammer out of Slade? Yeah, I like spears. I think spears are very dwarfy. Spears just have a nice aesthetic and look to them. Whatever makes your dwarves happiest. You know, honestly, like, there is part of me whenever I'm making squads that just wants to be, like, just personal choice weapon for all dwarves. Like, just go pick which weapon you like most and use that. 
is actually my favorite way to do stuff. All right, so let's assign some more dwarves to be able to use steel picks. Uh, not you because you're in a squad. Not you because you're in a squad. Basically, none of the dwarves that are in the squads, but I do need some more miners. Because I'm assuming, yep, all this is just getting worked on. That is a fuck ton of iron. We've discovered an expansive cavern deep underground. So we've discovered the lower caverns. I'm going to... Um, holy shit. Look at all of this ore. There's so much of it. All right, well, let's just run the dwarves down here. And just see what we're what we're dealing with here. Well, congratulations, Linku77. Welcome to the Twitch side of things. I would say Necromancer with an axe is low frame rate, but, you know, you do you. Right? Cave Toad Blood? Good, good, good. Excellent. Well, that's exciting. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to station the military up here. And I'm going to put a piece of floor over top of this. Actually, you know what? Maybe not a piece of floor. Let's put a trap door and cover it. I'm going to do that. We're going to lock a trap door down here. you embark on a vault you can break okay yeah that, i mean that's what i actually wanted to know is like how did you get the slate I, I figured it was that way but there's another way that i'm familiar with of with as well um i was mostly just curious as to how you actually harvested the slate all right so dwarves i'm gonna run you suckers back up to here Got a duck that grew up. What I think I'm going to start doing is just placing floors. I said floors, not, not walls. I guess I clicked on the walls button, but I was intending to start constructing floors. And just slowly start building over these ways down. Not give them any ways, reason to go down. We're going to remove collect all webs in a second. And this is what we're going to do. We are going to slowly construct a floor on this layer. So that we'll have access to the, this cavern. And all of the benefits of that um, shaft going down. And I will build uh, battle stations around the edges. So that we can shoot bolts at uh, creatures attacking us. And uh, that's about it. It should be fun. What's up, Embertron? It's going as well as it can. All things considered for myself. But uh, chat's been kind today. I uh, am sitting here and, you know, working on a fortress. Uh, I put out a very uh, sadistic video this morning, which hopefully everybody is happy with. I haven't actually looked at many of the comments yet, so that, that part's fun. Um... And yeah, you know, just trying to get by. Trying to do dwarfy things. One last time before I go off to TwitchCon for the week. And then I will be back next week. And then things will continue as per normal at that point. Everything on this side just leads down to water. Still not good, but science rules. I mean, it was something.
let's just jump up into here and go to uh, labor. Do not automatically collect webs. Thanks. Because I'll bet you that's what you're doing. Yep. I don't, I don't want them collecting webs. Uh, there's two ways. Uh, when you make a new, the normal way for uh, people who know how to play the game is if you make a new world and you go into advanced world gen settings, uh, you can turn on expose hidden sites or you can type in a command with DFAC. But personally, I would theme a whole world around it because if you get into the habit of doing stuff like that with DFAC, it's pretty hard to not do stuff like that with DFAC and I prefer to play the game the way it was intended. So the way you're supposed to find sites is you're supposed to go into uh, adventure mode and then you're supposed to discover the sites as an adventurer. And then when you make new forts in that in the world, um, they're just exposed when you start the fort. That's the way you're supposed to find sites. Um, but most people just cheat. So by turning them on. But you know, at the end of the day, it's up to you. If that if that doesn't feel like cheating to you, then that's fine. But uh feels like cheating to me, so I don't like doing it. I mean, DFHack doesn't care when you do things, so yes. Yep, but I would still advise against the, the method that would make using actual game mechanics less optimal. I would rather use actual game mechanics. There's also a way to expose them in fortress mode, but that requires uh, scrolling down very, 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 very long lists. Which were slow and tedious to search through before this version, so it's not new to this version. I think a lot of people, uh, I see a lot of people like saying that this version caused a lot of UI disruptions. A lot of the US UI disruptions are from the old game actually. You could use it after Embark, Dogma. And you can see them on the overworld then. It just exposes them. So as long as you're, like, in Fortress mode, you can run the Reveal Hidden Sites command and it'll reveal it. I mean, obviously, like, if you want to settle on one of those sites, then yeah. But you can use it, bef like, before you Embark... Uh, or after you embark, rather, and uh, discover the locations of them and then raid them from a fortress that you already have settled. So you can use it before or after. But obviously, yeah, if you want to settle on those locations, you have to use it before embark. But like I said, that's cheating. Okay. Let's uh, work on this. Maybe less cheating and more just lazy, <laughs> is what I would say, but scroll through the log list like the rest of us. Um. Uh. I, I'm mostly just taking the piss. Don't, don't take me too seriously. I'm just rambling while I'm, you know, constructing things. All right. Well, progress is being made slowly. Yeah, but what my I think my goal, I guess, over explaining the adventure mode re relation is, um, you know, when adventure mode comes out, I want people to use adventure mode, right? Because like the way the Dwarf Fortress community has existed culturally for a very long time is that, oh, you want to do do a thing? This is how you do it in DF Hack. And then nobody ever learns the way you're supposed to actually do the thing. Um, and there's a lot of mechanics like that in Dwarf Fortress that have existed like as long as I've played this game, where this is a feature that exists in the game. And then every single tutorial that tells... And I, I ran into this problem, actually, when I was learning the game properly. Every single tutorial guide and like FAQ FAQ doesn't actually tell you how to do it in game. It just simply says, 
oh, use lazy noob pack for this, or uh, you type in this command in DF hack, when in reality, a lot of those commands and features are things that are very accessible from within game. It just requires a little bit of knowledge of how, like, adventure mode works, or how fortress mode works, even. Um, and I think that that's kind of doing the game a disservice. So the reason I try and over-explain things like that, when somebody's like, hey, how do you access those? It's like, well, technically, you're supposed to do it this way. But, because we can't right now, here are some other ways you can do it. If that makes any sense. Looks like uh, I popped a cavern layer and are securing it. Yes. yes. And babbling about adventure mode stuff. I wasn't really planning on going into the caverns, but um, look at all this iron. This is all iron. There's so much of it. There's so much of it. There's so much of it. So yeah, we've kind of hit the mother load of magnetite. Um, so yeah, we, we are we are sealing this up. And uh, just above this, up here by the volcano area, we have all this, which is wonderful. So what I'm thinking about doing is um, maybe, what do you guys think? Little minecart route going up? I, I think I think we make a little minecart route going up. So let, let's go this way. I'm not gonna lie. One of my goals of this fort is to just use as many minecarts as possible. Actually, it act that actually is one of my goals of this forts. Okay, so let's um. Going up. I'm gonna have to construct this going up, which is gonna be kind of a pain, but. Would just uh, doing a real quick raid of a Garmin for it to get unarmed dwarves be optimal for starting raids from them? Why do you need to send unarmored dwarves? They just need to see you. You don't need the dwarves to die. You just need to attack them. I mean, obviously you want the dwarves to come back. So I wouldn't send unarmored dwarves. Copper with silver weapons? Why isn't copper... Okay, so I've killed necromancer towers with nothing but copper and silver. I have a question. Why do people seem to think that iron are the on is the only viable weapon in this game? Because that is very much not true. There is very much many, 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 many viable weapons in this game. Okay, well, just, just use iron and silver because they are perfectly viable. <laughs> Like, don't even bother looking for iron, even. If all you have is copper and silver, that's more than enough. Like, you could defeat hell with copper and silver. Although, make silver warhammers is my advice. That is my actual advice. Make silver warhammers. I like that you have one of the best weapon materials in the game being silver for silver warhammers. And your question is, do I send unarmed dwarves? That's your question. Naturally, yes. Gold best weapon type. Any question? Dwarf battle skill is more important. Yeah, that's actually, that's the actual reality. The most important thing for your dwarves is just like the the level of combat skill that they have. Nothing else really matters.
and view up here. We do this. The War Fortress doesn't have balance in the way that, like, I think a lot of people think of balance in video games. Just about anything is viable within reason, right? Like, yeah, there, there are certain things that will make your life easier if you have them, for sure. But almost anything is viable. Things being viable is the norm, not, not the other way around. All right, let's um, brew drinks from fruit, brew drinks from plant. Let's just do fifth. Let, let's just do three hundred and one hundred because I don't know how much of anything I have. Yeah, are you trying to kill your dwarves? Are you trying to repopulate goblin civilization? Because that's what that'll do. It'll just repopulate goblin civil civilization. Full masterwork adamantine armor to be only to be one shot by a thrown sock. Someone's got a good arm, clearly. Was it a bronze colossus? Always the question. Okay, well, I guess I have to do it this way. This is a little annoying, but is what it is. And it continues. Not much, Ace. Yourself? All right, so you are going to dump this way. Used arena once to make a bronze colossus fight a dragon. The dragon won by melting the colossus after a few breath attacks. Yeah, it depends on who gets to who first in that fight. Uh, if the dragon gets to the colossus first, the dragon wins. If the colossus gets to the dragon first, the colossus wins. Um, I need this to go straight line this way. It's not the weapon that's important, it's the wielder. I mean, just don't ever miss, and you of course will win. All right, easy enough. This right here can be for stone, magnetite. Magnets are pretty tight, is what this game is trying to tell me, I think. This dwarf has funny hair. What kind of hair is that dwarf? Very long beard is braided. Cyberman's a clean shaven. His mustache is long hair is braided. I guess it is braided. Maybe it's just a weird color. It looks like he's almost got like flat dreadlocks or something. All right, so this is going to be a very simple little minecart track. It's going to uh, start down here and end up here. And uh, this side, they're going to glide this way when full of desired items. 
this one, they are going to glide immediately when empty of desired items. Um, desired items are going to be magnetite ore, and they're going to load from uh, one location at the top side. And that's it. So you right here, we're going to load from this, and we're going to load you with magnetite ore. Coming from the mines. Like, would a hamster bronze colossus have... I don't think that... Okay, so bronze colossuses are bronze colossus. The image that they are of when they become a statue is not the form that they are in when they are a bronze colossus. It's more like flavor text. So, I don't think it actually has a, like, any kind of chance or variance there. And if it does, I'm completely unaware of how that would work. I'm pretty sure it's just flavor text. But also, like, you need to remember that the only difference between a el between a normal size elephant, a normal size bear, and a normal size lion um, is the lion has swords on its hands and a bite. The elephant has tusks, and the uh, bear. Um, also has teeth and swords on its feet, uh, whereas a cow uh, just has teeth. So if you get bit by a cow, it's just as bad as getting bit by a bear as is just as bad as getting hit by an ele or bit by an elephant. Um, the difference is the other weapons they have uh, as at their disposal and their general weight. So, yeah. Hold on, I'm just going to respond to a DM. And we're saving. Perfect. It's usually simpler to understand than one might think. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the depth in Dwarf Fortress is stuff that the player doesn't need to know or care about in a lot of instances. Like, in many ways, Dwarf Fortress kind of is a vanity project, right? And when we're talking about vanity projects, we're talking about, about like, well, the developers made a thing because they wanted to make a thing, not because it's necessarily logical to make the thing the way they made the thing. So there's plenty of things in Dwarf Fortress that, like, don't have any real reason to exist, which is why certain mod packs are very popular that remove a lot of the unnecessary depth. You know, things like temperature tracking on wood or, like, the fact that every single different type of wood in the game um, is a different material unto itself and is tracked as such. Um, so, you know, stuff like that. All right, well, that's just going to start bringing that up. And we've got intruders and a ghost, apparently. Um, what are the intruders? Ah, they're here to visit the, the, the body pile again. Well, that's nice. At the very least, they can make Edzul into something living again. Or not. They'll just run away without Edzul. You should have taken Edzul. <clears throat> um, all right, well, since they were unable, unable to take Edzul, we'll take advantage of that and uh, use Edzul's body for something else. Um, I need to figure out where I'm going to put Tombs. Panda, how are you? You're doing all right. I think the tombs should go under the forges. I think that would be dwarfy. What do you think, chat? I think any dwarf would be honored. To be in a space such as this. Um, let's also make rock coffin. Just 10 of them, sure. Let's use alabaster. 
I'm pretty terrible, but me is uh, besides the point currently. Child has grown up. Basically, I'll put it this way. It's it's kind of a challenge to not just be a bummer this whole stream. When did this fort get started? Uh, two streams ago, so this is my third stream of this fort. <clears throat> the elves are, would like to inform us, you have disrespected the trees in this area, but this is what we have come to expect from your stunted kind. Further abuse cannot be tolerated. Let this be a warning to you. All right, well, we can definitely work within that. Um, I just need to chop down some to make some to make some uh, space for my uh, far farming. But now that that's done, uh, we, we don't need to worry about that. So I'm sure, we, I'm sure we can accommodate that. I'm sure we can accommodate that now. All right, let's get coffins made. Coffins? Coffins! Apparently I'm out of alabaster, I guess. That or I just can't reach it, which is also possible. All right, so alabaster is the issue. I don't like the term knife ears. I, I've said this many times, but it really bothers me. It's too close to a racial slur for me to feel comfortable about saying that. Speaking of elves, elves have arrived to trade. We'll definitely trade them some stuffs. Got things that we could sell them. Always happy to trade with the elves. And we're continuing to make steel. Things will look up eventually, but uh, get on me for pushing through in the meantime. Yeah, I mean, it's weird, because, like, uh, long story short, um, I, lo I lost my second grandmother last night. Um, so earlier this year, I lost my dad's mom. And, uh, you know, like, less than 12 hours ago, my Oma died. So it's been... It's not, like, overwhelmingly terrible. It's just that weird empty feeling upon a family loss. So it's like... Just trying to do my best to stream. That's about it. I'll be fine. Don't worry about me, chat. Poorly timed yawn. <laughs> yeah, but see, here's the thing, right? If I'm being mean to the elves, I'm being mean to elves. If I'm being mean to goblins, I'm being mean to goblins. I don't have a slur for goblins. Yet a lot of people have a slur for elves. That's the weird bit for me. It's the nickname that I don't like. There's nothing wrong with being mean, mean to elves. I don't ever say green skin. Maybe you do. I call them green boys affectionately. Well, that's because they're my green boys. They're, they're my friends. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I just don't like the term knife ears. We can come up with something better than tree huggers. Let's go with that. Also, fun fact about um, goblins is not all of them are green. Half of them are gray. Kobolds? They're just kobolds. What? Willing test subjects? Not really. I would describe the um I, I don't like I don't think of the elves as antagonists at all. Maybe I just never got that feeling from them. And I think the main reason I've never thought of them as antagonists is because of how boring they are to fight. They're just super like the last fort we did was like entirely anti-elves, right? And like, you know, we we set a lot of elves on fire, but they are the weakest enemy to fight, period. The antagonists of Dwarf Fortress are like the necromancers, right? And the demons, and the angels, and the archdemons, or the archdevils. Um, 
maybe evil gods, not really the elves. I, I don't think any particular faction is an antagonist because the factions are so liquid, right? Like, and I've seen elven factions that are almost entirely populated with dwarves, just as an example. So, I don't know. Because, like, setting a species as the antagonist of a video game where you can be at war with every single elven faction in the game, but at the same time, your tavern could be full of adventurers, and all of those adventurers could be elves, who... Like, if you go look in Legends, disagreed, let's just say, with the, the, the warmongering goals of those factions and left. So you're putting an entire race as the antagonist of a game where, when it comes to factions, race doesn't matter. So goblins aren't the enemy, the demons are. Elves aren't the enemy, the trees are. And Gor Gorlaks are wonderful. Everybody loves a Gorlak. I don't know. To me, Dwarf Fortress enables these, like, interesting discussions, which I just think are fun to talk about. So if this conversation annoys people, feel free to just babble about something completely unrelated, and I will talk about something completely unrelated. I mean, yeah, no, any dwarf would fall for an elf in metal armor. It's just like any elf would fall for a dwarf in uniform. I mean, what? None of that was true. I'm just bullshitting now because words are fun. Were chinchillas? No, 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 no. The chinchilla. Not a were chinchilla, just the chinchilla is is our god. Dusty be his belt. You're kind of fascinated by the whole way that faction and cultures. To, to me, saying, like, goblins are the enemy or elves is the, is the enemy is a very, like surface level read of Dwarf Fortress just because of the way their factions work, right? It's like, goblins are only evil warmongers because they're literally run by masters who are demons. And if there isn't a master, the goblins are not peaceful but a lot less warmongery. <laughs> like, they don't just attack shit for no reason. Like, I, I've encountered um, goblin factions before that like didn't invade me until I attacked them after I'd been there for like right next door to them for like five six years because they didn't have a demon overlord they're just like insular weird we'll fight everybody who attacks us but yeah I don't know I, I, I think that the way factions and like specifically this page of the wiki ethics I, I think really talks a lot about the way different groups in this game work. And I think it's largely part of the reason this game is so fascinating to me. So, um, what could possibly be on the other side of this surprise box? Let's find out. It would help if I unpaused the game. I maybe turn up the priority on this a little bit. Uh, which part, Elfie? Ah, nothing. Excellent. Oh, yes, we got diamonds, diamonds, sapphire. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, a couple dwarves unconscious. Nobody dead. That's good. Celestar. We knocked out Celestaris' kid, or Celestaris, unfortunately, who is a uh, terminal wetness's kid, but uh, she seems to be fine. So that's good. It's a good page of the wiki. The ethics page of the wiki may actually be my most referenced page on the wiki, this period. All right, well, that's going to be enough iron for a really long time. Like, seriously, for a really long time. How am I doing on uh, steel bars? 279, hey? I think, um, chat, if... 
Yeah, let, let's let's do just two uh, steel helms. Steel helms, twenty of them. Twenty steel helms, please. Step right up. Give me those. We need helms, breastplates, gauntlets, and low boots. Van Ori, thank you very much for the five pack. Appreciate you, dude. I see you had to get the beers going first. <laughs> Appreciate you. Right, can I get a, a, a big round of beers for Van Ori and your generosity? Let's just do 30 of each. And let's see. I don't actually know if I have... Do, in fact, have slabs. Okay, so you right here. Let's just sell them some pigtail cloth. We'll do that. Because they have unicorns. So I would really like to keep these elves happy with me because, chat, they have unicorns. And and you've, you haven't lived... Um, until you've had a unicorn burger. Don't tell the elves that. But I would really like to make unicorn burgers for my dwarves. Well, looks like they didn't bring any burgers this time. However, um... They did bring us some sand pears and some... Snack time. Bitty! Thanks for the bitty. And apples. We can make cider. We can make pears. Ooh. Avocados. We can make toast. Kind of them. There you go. Have some cloth. And uh, over here, uh, well, my 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 boss god, uh, Dwarfy Almighty, uh, wants steel chains. We'll make two of them. You know, it's it's funny, like, when you ask me, do I know if there is? Um, I would just go look at Bay 12. Like, if if like if, if you go to um, bay12games.com slash dwarves, this website, and you go to, I think it's, no, it's not features. It's uh, development. Go to development. These are all of their loosely planned features. Now, admittedly, this hasn't been updated in a while, but um, there's a key right here. So stuff that's in the game is green. Stuff that's planned is um, not green and gray. So as you can see, there's a lot of gray text here. So just go look at this. A12games.com slash dev. Slash dwarf slash dev. Not HTML. Yeah. So um, usually when people are asking me those questions, I just, I'm skip I open that website up and I'm skimming it. Anonymous Gifter, thank you very much for gif gifting a sub to Salty. And uh, tell or um, and uh, shark jumping walrus. Thank you very much for the for the biddies. Appreciate you, mate. We were able to trade with them just in time. Damn, that was quick. Okay, so I've got a few of these that I need to place. You hate to sound like an impatient zoomer, but you want to see Toady die before the one-tenth of those features are in? I'll say this, it's been, like, abnormally slow. But it's been abnormally slow for a pretty valid reason. It's been abnormally slow because like Dwarf Fortress rebuilt the entire game and they're still in the process of doing that. Um, so updates for Dwarf Fortress for a very long time kind of go move in two cycles, right? Um, is he really just, is he just really protective of the project? No, the game runs entirely in its own code. It runs in, in C plus and not on an engine. 
So if you want to have a feature, you have to build the feature instead of being able to just add the feature, if that makes any sense. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a programmer, so I can't give you technical terminology, but the reason development for Dwarf Fortress is slow is the reason any game that runs on its own engine is slow. You're developing the engine as well as the game. You can't just go yell at Unreal and be like, make the game fat, make my engine better so that I can make the game better. No, they, they have to build the engine accordingly. So with that in mind, why do updates take so long? Because right now we've seen more engine updates to the game than literally ever in the game's existence. Um, so updates take a while because you have to build the update, right? So will you see those updates by the end of uh, Toadie's lifetime? Toadie's in his 40s. He's not a decrepit old senior citizen. He's middle-aged. Give the guy a break. Stop talking about him like he's about to keel over and die. Christ. And aside from that, Dwarf Fortress goes through two periods of time generally. It goes from extremely quick flurry of small updates over a couple of months. Like, there will be times where we will move up, like, eight versions in two months and get, like, dozens of new features. And then we won't see anything for a year and a half. And then a massive game-changing update that changes half of the game appears. And then we won't see anything for six months. And then a bunch of small things appear that change the way worlds generate, but don't really change the game much, is kind of the cycle that Dwarf Fortress takes. So you'll have a year of a lot of updates, and then you'll have two years of not many updates. And also, think about it this way. Generally, when Dwarf Fortress updates, uh, recent updates haven't been the case because they've been doing so many engine upgrades, bug fixes, and um, uh, they're all the same right now, Technosera. Um, so just play the current stable because they're all the current stable. There is nothing different in the beta or experimental builds. Um, there is private bet ranches, but nobody else, nobody has access to those aside from the team. So the thing that you need to remember about a Dwarf Fortress update is when Dwarf Fortress is updating on its normal cycle, an update is the size of most games' expansion packs. Usually reworks a lot of stuff in adventure mode, usually adds a couple of fortress mode features, and usually rebuilds a bunch of um, world generation stuff and generally makes the game run better. And you, we usually get around one of those a year during normal update cycles. There's usually about one of those a year. You know what else updates about once a year? RimWorld. The difference is RimWorld charges you $40 for that update, at least in Canadian money. Um, you know what else updates a couple times a year? Sometimes, usually once a year with big expansion packs? Paradox games. They charge you 40 to 50 bucks for them. Dwarf Fortress doesn't. So, yeah, you get updates not that frequently, but they're free. And when they drop, they're generally pretty major. So, why does it take so long? because it's not running on Unity. It's very rare that games actually run on their own engines these days. One of the biggest reasons DF is slow for updates is because of the size of the game. There are probably very few games, if any, that has that much detail. I mean, here's another good example, right? This is a video game that I really like, that I stream sometimes. Jupiter Hell. Now, Jupiter Hell runs in its own engine. The developer of this game used to joke that they would release before Duke Nukem Forever um, because they started development while Duke Nukem Forever was still in development. Although the first, like, eight and a half years of this game's development was literally spent building the engine for it. Now he can push, up upda push out updates really quickly because the development of the engine is done. Dwarf Fortress is developing its engine in concurrence with the game itself, right? Which is not the right way to do it, but they've been doing it that way for a very long time. And what the fuck? Diablo's on Steam? Huh. Well then. Can't wait for that to be the second most disliked game on Steam. Anyway, uh, <laughs> wow. I'm actually really curious to see what its Steam update, what it, what its um, Steam reviews look like. Okay, so they charge you f uh, fifty dollars for the new update. Gotcha, Fortress. 
No, I, I, I am very much not on the side of make the game develop quicker. Um, if you're, I genuinely believe this, and please don't take this the wrong way. Um, if you feel that you are frustrated that Dwarf Fortress isn't developing faster, do what the vast majority of the Dwarf Fortress player base has done as long as I've played. This is a controversial thing to say. Go play a different video game. Dwarf Fortress will be here when you get back, when there are updates out, and when you are ready to play again. Um, as long as I've played, the vast majority of the Dwarf Fortress community takes long breaks. There is, like, of course, that core community that sticks around and just plays Dwarf Fortress, but if there's a feature missing, if there's something that you really wish the game had, there are other video games. And Dwarf Fortress will still be here and will still be developing when you get back. I mean, that's also an option, but if you're modding the game so that it does the thing you want it to do, I generally would assume that you're probably not the person who's sitting there going, man, I hope the game updates tomorrow so that the feature that I just modded into the game uh, is in the game proper. You're probably not saying that as much, right? So that probably doesn't uh, uh, like apply to you, really. And also, I wouldn't really go calling people impatient Zoomers. I do kind of feel like some people are entitled. Generally, the only thing that really bothers me is when I see people saying that, like, like accusing the developers of being bad at programming or um, accuse them of being lazy or something, which is just, like, couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> so, like, I, yeah, I don't know. I... Dwarf Fortress is a unique case, and I think that Dwarf Fortress is a good example of, you know, developers should be allowed to work at their own pace and create their, their vision and let them do that. Sorry, I just opened up Steam and I see Diablo, and I, I knew it was, I saw a thing yesterday saying it was coming to Steam. I didn't ex assume it would be literally today, <laughs> so... I kind of thought that would take, like, you know, a week, maybe? But... I don't know. Nothing gets you more mad than people who can't program telling you you don't know how to program. So I don't know how to program. Um, I, I know some... I know some PHP and some out-of-date HTML code um, and some out-of-date Python. Uh, so I don't know how to program. And it bothers me when people say that other people don't know how to program. When I couldn't tell you if any of them know how to program. It's just I, I don't like it when people insult other people's intelligence or skill sets when it's their skill set. Is there things Tony could be better about? Certainly. But does the guy not know how to program? No, dude knows how to program. Absolutely, yeah, no, actually, that's that's a good way to put it. I never thought about it that way, Montaku, is that it's a family business and not a, and not like a corporate production studio. That's, a, that's actually a really good way to put it. I'm going to steal that. Thank you. It's like it's trying, it's, it's like you're trying to com compare Walmart with like, I don't know, some family run market. You're a developer, and most of the time you feel like you don't know how to code either. Well, I mean, I'm a full-time Twitch streamer, and I don't know what I'm talking about most of the time, so. I talk to people for a living, and I, 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 that. That's about it. All right, let's keep filling these in. I should really be building my defenses, but for some reason I'm more concerned about the basement than I am the surface. So this up here needs a drawbridge across it, is what this needs. Also needs an entryway going out this way, so let's start building that. It's 
up, Deep Space Renegade? The right forgotten beast is scarier than any goblin army. No, I agree. Like, <laughs> they can be terrifying. But some migrants have arrived. And an ad's about to start. So I'm just going to wait until the ad's done, and then we'll name a couple dwarves. What do you think, chat? It depends on who's working on it at the time. But, like, you need to remember, right? Tarn has hinted a couple of times already that... Okay, think think about it this way, right? I just went and saw Tangerine Dream. Tangerine Dream is a musical group that has existed since 1967. The original founder of the group passed away in 2015. The group still produces music, and uh, throughout the last 30 years, the original founder of the group was training a prodigy. Pro prodigy. Prodigy. That said. Was mentoring some dude. And that dude now runs the group. He writes music under the name and releases music as Tangerine Dream. Keeping it going. Be the same thing. Maybe Putnam. Maybe somebody else. Depends on who's helping at the time. That or who knows. Maybe when Tarn passes away, it'll be in his will that the game will get open sourced. When that happens, it happens. Can you be the head of a temple again, please? I have absolutely no control over that. The dwarves have control over that. Yeah, it's more the old the old fashioned way of like having a musical ensemble than the modern way of having a band, you know? Wait, what'd they send you? You guys with OCB? I fucking hope not. <laughs> Pocket glass. They wanted to hire me to uh, write, write, do stuff for community. I'd be interested, but uh, no. A lobster composed of platinum? How easy is it to cut platinum? <laughs> like, I know it's dense. I don't know what its hardness rating is. Huh. I've seen steel. I've never seen platinum. Yeah, I mean, it might fall apart pretty... Easily. Hmm. I just want to comment on this because somebody finally commented it on my, uh... Just, just because somebody finally com commented about it uh, on, on my Dwarven Weight Loss Program video. It's very nice of the dwarves to clean up their own blood after getting it all vented out of their body. Hello, CJ man. How's things? Crab made of glass recently? Glass can be bad if you have the wrong weapons, yeah. Uh, chat room, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. First person to say the number gets this dwarf. Unless they already have a dwarf, in which case I will simply ignore them. So somebody who already has a dwarf guessed the number. But I can't give it to that person. Because they already have a dwarf. So... You know what? We'll do it this way. Baka, you just select somebody from the list of numbers of you who gets a new dwarf. Baka, who gets a dwarf? Because you actually said the number first. You, the number was four. So uh, who do you think gets it? Yay. What's up, sniper? How goes boat? Also, holy shit, tier three. Ben is an optimist. He is very trusting. He is sloppy with his living space and does not enjoy participating in physical confrontations, though, though he is conflicted by this for more than one reason. He finds helping others to be emotionally rewarding and has an active sense of humor. He tends to think before acting, and he tends to ask others for help with difficult decisions. He is somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger and doesn't tend to hold on to grievances. And he is not inherently proud of his talents and accomplishments and generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity and tends to not reveal personal information.
He dreams of creating a great work of art and personally prefers a noisy, bustling life to boring days without, of, but without activity and respects power and doesn't feel strongly about the law. And uh, you do not worship the the great chinchilla, unfortunately. But you're a member of the doctor, doctrine of in, doctorate of intricacies. Uh, the next dwarf here is going to be given away by the first person to correctly type in the hmm, Twitch emote that's global that starts with a s and ends with a s. First person to get the emote correct gets it. There you go, Manori. Manori does the thingy and uh, can be very happy and optimistic and really feels discouraged and sometimes can act without deliberation and confidence and doesn't handle stress well and has an active imagination. Dreams of raising a family and personally doesn't feel strong, values tranquil, strongly values tranquility, quiet, and finds romance distasteful. Welcome to the fort. Uh, so the next few dwarves chat are going to be named simply by uh, first come, first serve until they get bored. So uh, say pick me. True. True, you are you are right. So let let's give uh, Shogun a dwarf for uh, time stamping all of my videos. Uh, she is truly she is often cheerful and is often nervous and doesn't cling tightly to ideas and is open to changing her mind. She is trusting and she often acts with compassion. She is somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger and likes to keep things practical without delving too deeply into the abstract and chews her nails when she's thinking. She dreams of raising a family and personally finds acquisition of power, uh, uh, use of power abhorrent and would have all masters toppled. And views competition as a crucial driving force in the world and finds eloquence and artful speech off-putting and does not care about friendship. And she's a novice Marksdorf. Dreams of raising a family? Somewhat fearful in danger. That's fine. You can hide behind a wall. You are, in fact, a novice Marksdorf, though, Shogun. Same with this one bone doctor I have. Yeah, you can join the military too. And thanks for gifting a sub to Brady. Appreciate you, friend. Also, let's uh, grab both of these squatties and say uh, update uniform. There we go. Look at all this better armor we're getting. It's an improvement. All right, uh, now let's go to the front of the line because I left the game unpaused for a few seconds. Let's go to the pick me's. Go pick me. Who gets a pick me? Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll count dibs. Dibs counts. Sam Taxagon, Fortress Designer Exquisitaire very rarely moved by mercy, by curiosity and is grounded in reality and lacks confidence in his abilities and it rarely is happy or enthusiastic. He is conflicted by this as he values parties and merrymaking in the abstract. He is often nervous and he tends to avoid any physical confrontations and works to square this natural tendency with his respect of martial prowess. He is trusting and he rarely uh, feels discouraged and he takes offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful. He does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive feelings and he tends to assume that the worst of two outcomes will be the one that comes to pass. And he acts with a narrow focus on the current activity and is brave in the face of imminent danger. And he is not particularly interested in what others think of him and needs alcohol to get through the working day and personally values tradition and sees sacrifices wasteful and foolish and sees life as unfair and doesn't mind it that way and finds maintaining decorum a silly and public waste of time. Over here we have this animal dissector named Alath. Alath dreams of raising a family and is now officially named it. Uh, I don't think you have a dwarf, so. MA said 64. Personally believes that the idea of time taken to master a skill is a horrible waste and sees competition as valuable and doesn't care about nature one way or another and dreams of raising a family. He dislikes obligations and will try to avoid being bound by them. Checks out. And he, though he is conflicted by this for more than one reason, he very, he only rarely feels strong cravings or urges and, okay, and only rarely tries to assert himself in conversation. He is very impolite and inconsiderate of property. He accepts favors without developing a sense of obligation, preferring to act as the current situation demands. He tends to make it a small mess with his own possessions, and he likes to brawl, and he doesn't focus on material goods. He often feels discouraged and acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. He has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions of a practical application. He doesn't mind a little too about discord and day-to-day -day living. And he has a tendency to go in alone without considering the advice of others. And is quick to anger and often feels envious of others and does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity.
You've been doing a lot of different games? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you, you need to take an opportunity to do different things. Ah, oh, boy. Who's been picked so far? A few. A few. N I E S C H E. But there will always be more opportunities to get dwarfed. Also, chat room, I just have to say thank you for like all of the gift subs and whatnot, because this is the first time in my entire streaming career where I've been able to go to TwitchCon without having to fundraise for a month and a half to be able to afford to go to TwitchCon. <laughs> Which is kind of nice. It's nice to not have to have, like, a massive credit card bill followed by, all right, um, here's a big tip goal. Help. <laughs> is what every other trip to TwitchCon's been like for me. Last time I went to TwitchCon was in 2019, which was quite a while ago at this point. So this here is uh, Dr. Nish, who is um, a peasant. Uh, he has a very low sense of self-esteem and can be very happy and optimistic. He has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions over practical applications, and he has a tendency to, towards forming deep and emotional bonds with others. Often feels discouraged and is slow to trust others, and he tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects and needs alcohol to get through the working day. Dreams of mastering a skill and personally values peace over war um, and values loyalty and doesn't care about art one way or another. And I'm sure we can give you a dwarf. Biggest beardist. Next over here is Erdim. Erdim is uh, apparently a technophobic freak. Um, I mean, I've been a okay. So let's let's put it this way. Um. I did some math recently. In uh, 2019, I made $4.21 an hour um, based on number of hours streamed, which, by the way, I used to stream about 230 hours a month back in those days. Uh, in 2020, I made $6 an hour. Uh, in 2021, I made $8 an hour. In 2022, I made uh, $8.50 an hour. And uh, this year, on average, I've made around $27 an hour so far. But that's before taxes, so that number probably going to drop. And that's also just Twitch revenue. That's not all of the revenue. So has it launched my career? I don't know. I've had a career. It was just one where I had to literally do nothing but work. More, I tripled, more like. So, yeah, I, I can... I am now what's considered a living wage here. Because <laughs> minimum wage here is like, also I'm, I'm speaking in Canadian money reference. Living wage here, or a minimum wage here is 1650. So it's my, this has been my first year of my like entire streaming career where I've been above minimum wage. <laughs> Just kind of, hey. Um, but I, I don't know. I, it's been the majority of my income since 2016. So I guess it, it de depends on... Um, it depends on what uh, your definition of having a career launched. I've, I've had a career for a long time in streaming. I'm just actually making a decent wage now. Um, so this dwarf cuts any corners when possible when working on a project, regardless of the consequences, rather than wasting effort or resources. She never feels lustful passions, and she is not the type to fall in love or even develop positive feelings. She often is discouraged, and she often acts with compassion. She is conflicted by this, as she sees these tendencies as an impotent to the quest for power. She occasionally can lose focus on the matter at hand, and she does not go out of her way to help others, and my phone is vibrating. Why is that? Pointless push notification from my airline about why I haven't checked baggage yet. It's because I don't need to check baggage. She has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions over practical applications and exhales sharply when she becomes exasperated and her tongue sticks out when she's trying to remember something because she mems. She dreams of creating a great work of art and personally respects power and doesn't see the attainment of knowledge as important and doesn't care about fairness and does not care about family one way or another and uh, worships a deity and is a member of the doctrine of intricacies. And I think that's it for right now, because otherwise I'll just be here naming dwarves for the rest of the day. 
Yes, I had a wage increase. So yeah, no, I mean, I've certainly had a career this whole time. It's just I've been on the fringes instead of like, you know, actually doing all right, I suppose. Yeah, the airline that I'm flying there with is a very cheap airline, so they try and upcharge for literally everything, um, including, like, bags and whatnot. So it's generally, uh, generally they just sit there and pester you from here to hell and back about, you sure, are you sure you don't want to check bags? Because, like, they, they charge you an arm and a leg to check baggage. So they want to make absolutely sure that you do not want to give them an extra, you know, $150 to check bags. Yeah, but some are worse than others. <laughs> Trust me, some are worse than others. This is an airline where I could fly from here to Toronto for 50 bucks. Better not bring anything. If you're just traveling with like a handbag or a backpack, you're okay. But if you try and bring anything else, they're more expensive than any other airline. But if you're bringing literally nothing, they are super cheap. And as somebody who travels very light when he travels, not, not an issue for me. Now charge for carry-on bags? Really? Oh, well. Uh, for reference, I'm flying Flair. Like I said earlier, the only airline that has crashed planes in Canada this year. So, if I die, you know why. If I don't make it back from Vegas, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> so this is going to have a bridge here. That's why you just wear your suit. Just wear it on the plane. It's fine. What could possibly go wrong? Dwarven Child Shake Break has been possessed. I tell my CPU that all the time, and it used to never listen on the old computer, so hopefully planes listen better than computers. You know, I, and I also say that, but like, jokes aside, there was a time I saw somebody in a full fursuit on a plane, so. It's statistically more safe to go with them now. To be fair, nobody died in either of those crashes, so I'm not too bothered about it. You know, I'm just not going to, like, respond to anything that chat is saying right now because they could be going in one of two directions with it. And uh, I'm not comfortable going in either direction. So I will just simply sit here and smile and say, probably. I need to cut a gem. I see nothing. Also, chat, what do you think of the Halloween emotes? We got two. We got Treatland, and then we got Crypt Blank, who's still blank. All right, that's the baddie entrance. Now I need to figure out where to put levers. Already kind of got an idea though. Never mind, that's not actually where I want to put levers. 
I want to put levers. Candy or else. Yes, pretty much. Gib candy or die. This will be Mission Control, Dwarf Edition. Their fort just got flooded. Oh, yay. Good. Classic fun. But uh, my afternoon's as good as it can be. All things considered. Okay, so this is going to go right here. And I need more... More rock mechanisms. Let's just do 20 of them. I... Uh, Five by five, I think? It might have been six by six. It's not a four by four, though. I don't know. One that surprises me. Levy. As it turns out the ones I'm the most excited for are the ones I don't know are, that are coming. So, I don't know. We'll see. Depends on what gets added. You tried to place a well to stop the flood? Wells aren't going to stop the flood unless you mean wall. Um, but yeah, depending on the, the, the size and intensity of said aquifer, yeah, that, that could be a pretty bad way to go. At least you didn't do the, the classic, like, dug into a river while it was frozen and then got flooded by the river when it thawed. Which admittedly is way easier to do in this version. many reasons. Just build some more beds like that. Yeah, but yeah, I don't generally try to fixate levy on things that aren't in the game yet. Because what's the point? <laughs> so I just gen generally just play the game as is and have fun as the game is. And then when fixes come out, I'm happy for them. Fixating on things that aren't in the game yet just kind of makes one impatient. I wanted to dig a tunnel to a very specific place, but there's an aquifer in the way. Is there a way to completely remove the aquifer? Nope. Not without cheating. If you uh, remove the... If you channel down and make like a pit mine and remove all of the walls and seal up the edges. That will stop the aquifer from being an issue in that region, but there is no way to completely remove an aquifer. Yeah, once you've like figured out how to be really creative with things like mist, you can build some really cool devices and buildings and areas. Very satisfying construction game once you get into it.
Why'd you have to do that, Lanix? Plus traps to flood your enemies? Yeah. Unless they're undead, in which case they don't seem to mind the flooding much. Also need to figure out how much wood I have in a minute. Plenty. Hope everyone is okay. You're talking to a Dwarf Fortress community, so it's going to be really hard to tell if uh, people are okay or if they're just talking about their fortress. It is truthfully kind of difficult to discern sometimes. Do I have chains queued up or did I make those already? I have them queued up. How many uh, bars do I have? Quite a lot. There we go. Making progress. Look at all of this. Look at all of this. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, a car being totaled is terrifying. Regardless of what's going on. Get them training, and then get back to doing that. That is um, not good for that guy, is all I can really say. In regards to not having like insurance or registration on his car. It's kind of one of those things you just have to have which is a very bland, vanilla, uneducated way of putting it by me. Casting? To How many floors are those towers? I mean, when you say casting, do you mean casting the bricks and then placing them or literally like 3D printing towers? Because I've 3D printed buildings before and it's so slow. It's so slow. Eight floors? Damn. It's cool. Kind of want to put bars up on this back wall here just to make it look nicer. And your FPS is tanking? The FPS should recover. What else do you need? Bones, maybe? Time to butcher... Um, Bunch of warthogs. Do that. And um, good news, chat. We have baby giraffes. So that's good news. We've got biggie giraffes and baby giraffes. And the black mamba hasn't killed anybody yet. 
unfortunately, the black mamba is trained. Actually, I wonder, do, do, do you think black mambas lay eggs? I actually don't know. Starting to look like a zoo? I mean, we're just taming the local flora and fauna, which is pretty normal Dwarf Fortress-like stuff. Am I going crazy or did something just shoot venom? I think I'm going crazy. Nope, that was just a baby giraffe moving at turbo speed. Got it. Baby giraffe have the zoomies, apparently. Okay, what else do you need, Shake Break? You have bones, kid jam shining, bricks, okay. Sorry, my mom's texting me, and given the circumstances, I have to respond in a timely manner. I also want cloth thread. I don't have cloth. Got shining gems. Rough color and cloth thread. Well, we're waiting on this ad now, so. Yeah, I mean, it looks like, it's looking like cloth is the issue. Looking like it. I did sell off a bunch of, um... Pigtail cloth. Looks like I got nothing that I can, uh... Well, what I could do is I, I could go into standing orders and we could turn on web collection again. But apparently... Well, pigtails are in right now. We'll have pigtails pretty soon. So I'm not sure. Black Bombas lay eggs, not one of the live birth snakes. Gotcha. I wonder if that's represented in this game then. Yeah, this isn't a giant black mamba. This is just a black mamba. I would like to save this child. Well, we are in pigtail season, so it's possible that there are some living pigtails down here. Those are dead pigtails. Dead pigtails. Always dead pigtails. There are some pigtails. Let's harvest those. In fact, let's harvest all of these. All of them are stuff. A lot of dimple cups, actually. It's possible they're looking for yarn. We can also uh, spin thread. I think I have a... Yeah, I, I do have an alpaca. All right, well, let's... Spin some thread, then. I already got NAF, or whatever, however you pronounce it, with the K. KNAF. Right, we'll, we'll go for the alpaca. Gonna go be a mod. Enjoy your modding, panda. Stray alpaca wool. We're gonna spend thread. Might be what she needs. I don't know. It's either that or like cave spider silk. And while they're weaving the yarn cloth, you move when that job on the right there is done, then that's what you needed. Yep, that's what she needed. All right, so she needed yarn cloth. We got alpaca wool cloth. Let's see what else you go grab. Good call chat, by the way. Um, human caravan has arrived. Interesting. 
Grabs Magnetite. And they want me to make a guild for the Guild of Roughness. A Craft Dwarfs guild. Hmm. Question is, where do I put it? That is the question. That's not the button I wanted. Um, the button I wanted was this. There we go. We got six more bedrooms and probably a ton of dwarves that need beds. Eh, not so bad. We're actually keeping up okay. To get a dying industry off the ground, but you think it would be fun to have some different colored cloaks? Yeah, they don't actually... It's not actually represented on the dwarves visually, though. So, like, that's that's the one thing you got to remember about that. Um, I think I will sell these humans the non-steel bolts, is what I will do. And... Might be everything, actually. I think I'm going to make steel crossbows. I'll sell these wooden crossbows. I'm going to go up to here, and we're going to go steel crossbow, and we'll make 30 of those. Is this a free or paid game? Uh, this is the paid version, but technically it's a free game. Free version um, just doesn't include the graphics or the music, so the free version looks like this. Paid version, you can turn graphics on if you want. And hello, Darren. How you doing? But if you want the free version, just go to bay12games.com slash dwarves and download her. Right here. Or Linux or Windows. Till 9 a.m. playing Civ. That's the, the Civ effect, I think. Pretty common occurrence for those playing a lot of Civ. Not much in the way of trade value here, but... I guess I can definitely buy some meats, if nothing else. Shake breaks become that mysterious construction. All right, so now the question is, where in the world do I put the craft store skill? I also started building up here for slabs and then moved it to down here. Not sure what I'm going to end up doing with that. One more turn. One more turn. One more turn. Tail as old as games. Need to get some more flow into this. But that being said, Shake Break, the Dwarven Child has created Betanamal. Betanamal. 
uh, a wild boar bone grieves and claims it is an heirloom in the name of the family ancestor, Ral Lucid Tin. Be lucid like the tin. This is a wild boar bone greaves. All craft store ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with rectangular chert cabochons and table cut white jades and decorated with cave spider silk and encircled with bands of oval chert cabochons. This object menaces with spikes of wild boar bone, white jade, and alpaca wool and magnetite. Verifying space behind you to emerge in front of a semi and didn't see the very large object in the road. Now you have a new tire. Well, that sucks. Could be worse though. At least it's just a new tire and not like, you know, a new car. Seven thousand dwarf bucks. It's pretty cheap. It's just a bone it's artifact, so it's not actually that valuable. And then in here, we will set up more bedrooms. 